Aaron here with Aaron's Tech Corner. Today I want to introduce you what I would call my playroom home theater. I've always wanted my own home theater room. Um, had this new house built, had a really nice uh, 16 by 14 bonus room. Um, but I also have a six year old, so he needs a play area. So basically we're combining the two for now. And this is kind of a uh, approach to having a home theater and having a child's play space, but also protecting all the gear and making it, you know, less, uh, uh, I guess it's just less interesting for them, the kid, to go ahead and uh, mess with things. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna go ahead and flip around here and uh, we'll just start with the front. And what we have here is a Hisense 75 inch uh, U8H uh, TV and it's fantastic and it's big. Plenty of uh, uh, size for your uh, Disney Plus cartoons and all that stuff. What you see on it is a, uh, a PET, or it's kind of like basically a plexiglass shield, and this keeps the screen from impacts, cat scratches, that kind of thing. Um, and it's a, made by TV Guard. They're about 300 something dollars, or if you want to feel adventurous, you can go buy a piece of plexi and make one yourself. I've done it in the past with a smaller TV. Um, I have an Ikea Best of Media cabinet, and uh, that's where I keep all the gear. Um, the speakers are RSL W25E, and that's for my left, center, and right. And I'm going to go ahead and just go up here and peel off. These are magnetic grills, and you can see these are a, uh, I guess, a mineral-filled, I guess, aramid or woven five and a half or five, yeah, five-inch cone with a, a little uh, one inch tweeter and the tweeter is swivel adjustable and there is a uh, crossover gain setting for the uh, tweeters there. You can see there's a 15 degree angle built into these speakers, which is not common on in-wall speakers, especially ones that fit in a two by four depth wall. And that is nice because when we spin around to the main listening position, which is currently a uh, small little sofa, which someday when the kid grows up, we will go ahead and replace that with some nice recliner uh, theater seating. And uh, that angle kind of helps us point the sound right towards the center. Same with the right. And then the center is, because this is mounted pretty low, this also has that angled up baffle. And this one's angled up, so it shoots up. And then the tweeter is kind of aimed a little bit more towards you know, exactly where the, your ear level would be. Um, let's see, there's me. Going up to the ceiling, we have a uh, set of four of the RSL W34 Mark II, and these are also a 15 degree baffle. They are angled and pointed down towards the listening position. So this theater is a 5.1.4. Um, what we have in the back here along these walls, these are just some uh, less expensive Mica M6S uh, in walls. And they're pretty basic, but they sound decent for surround duty. Um, they're set a little bit far behind here. And then the tweeters are angled in about a 10, 15 degree angle towards the listening position. So I paid a lot of attention to Dolby's um, guides for this to, to really do this. And you can see that the space right now looks really nice and clean. And like I said, the big thing was child proofing. I wanted in wall speakers and not on walls because I don't, or not, not bookshelves, because I don't want things that he can rip off the walls. I don't want things he can really just kind of play with and poke at and, and things like that, or knock down. I just, you know, kids are rough on things. My kid is very rough on things. <laughs> and you might wonder, well, where's the subwoofer? It's there. So what I've done is I actually took an Ikea lac table and I uh, made, bought some little uh, eighth inch hardboard and cut some holes in it and wrapped it in speaker fabric, cut a notch in each one of these legs, and slid this up and uh, basically this is the RSL 10S Mark II speed woofer. It's a nice subwoofer and uh, I have a cat. I don't want her to scratch the grill up and I also don't want my son to really think that he should go play with the settings and mess with it. So it's kind of a nice way to hide it. It looks nice and it adds another little table for him to put his toys and things on. So going to the actual media cabinet we have the, like I said, the Ikea Besta TV unit, and basically the Besta TV unit, very similar to the regular Besta, but it's not as tall. It's only about, oh, like 15 inches tall or so, but it has this nice hole up top for a cable pass-through. 
uh, which I'm not using because everything is in wool. Everything has cable conduits and I, I you know, did that to kind of protect everything. And what I've also done is the doors, they can open. Why? I used good old baby proofing magnetic locks. So let's go ahead and hold that there. Now we can open it. And you can see there is my Onkyo nine channel NR7100 receiver with direct live room correction. And on top of it, I have an AC infinity fan and that is pulling air out of it. And then up top here, you can see I've got another AC infinity fan and that acts as an exhaust fan. And what we've done, or what I've done, is I designed a 3D file here that is a duct that basically shoots air out of this top hole here as an exhaust. And you can see that's the main exhaust. And then there's some round holes if I want to pass cables through here, which my child loves to pass toys. I'm going to have to build a new version of that with a, a grate. Um, but basically on the bottom of the Vesta, it's hard to see it, but <laughs> it's kind of really hard actually. I can't get through there, but with the camera, but there's another one of those slots. And so that's basically the air intake. So that's pulling cold air in, running the receiver and exhausting hot air out. Works great. It keeps super cool when this door is shut. And what I've also done is I have a little temperature sensor stuck to the wall here. It's a little custom microcontroller that I built and it ties to my home automation, my uh, home assistant system. And when uh, the cabinet temperature gets too hot, my Amazon Echoes go off. They tell me the media cabinet's too hot. And this cool, colorful LED strip down here turns bright red to let me know there's a problem, go address it. And here there's also a uh, network switch that is power over ethernet. And that runs everything over into this and this other section, which has other, other gear. Behind here though, another 3D printed thing you can see, it's a really wide, 20 inch wide by 3.7 inch deep box I built. And it adds basically like three and a half inches behind the receiver to give this receiver room to push back and have banana plugs. And you can see I've got a two inch hole with my cable conduit that comes in from behind the TV, up, way up under there. And there's, you know, another two inch hole with some rubber grommets that pass all of the speaker wires from, basically they come in from this, the ceiling here. And then also uh, from the bottom around here. And that keeps it all nice and tidy because the Vesta TV unit is not very deep. It's only 15 and a half inches with the back cut out from the back of that wall to the front of there. This receiver is 15 inches. Not a whole lot of room to work with, right? So, you really just, that, that's kind of a necessity to make it easy to, to, main, you know, to maintain and to deal with. So moving on, we'll go ahead and shut this and it nice and locks and we'll unlock this guy. And this needs some cable management. So please bear with me. I'm gonna do some more of this, but yep, I've got my Xbox Series S, my Apple TV streaming box, and then yeah, the mess of power and cable and everything down here. And eventually I'll have some other streaming box type things. Um, but right now when I play Xbox, I have to leave this door open because that thing heats up really fast as well. So the next step for me will be the same type of thing where I will drill some kind of a hole in the bottom as an intake and then have a fan sitting over here as an exhaust. But I basically just wanted to give you a nice overview. This is what you can do in a space that you wanna share with your child and have a, a really nice home theater. It sounds amazing. The RSL speakers are fantastic. I can't say enough good things about them. And with that direct room correction, it just, it's very immersive. I mean, it's its fantastic. It, it sounds, well, it sounds fantastic. I'm gonna keep saying that. Um, but basically, uh, yeah, this will be a nice room to grow with. And I spaced these out so that we can uh, eventually move up to an 85 inch TV should we want get some new theater seating. And you know what, even someday if I really, really want to, I could still do some back speakers into a 7, a 714 or 724 setup. But I would probably need a different cabinet at that point or have to put an AV cabinet somewhere just because that would be a lot harder to fit a bigger receiver in there. So I hope you enjoy this theater. Hopefully it gives you some ideas. If you have any questions or comments or improvements I could make, let me know. Thanks for watching.